questions about the welding setup on the record. This is a premier power welder system. Runs off of a specialized alternator. So it's got two sides. It's got the charge side and the weld side. That's controlled by this box in here. You've got your main control box here. You've got your power on. And then this is your power tool switch to operate your, your plug-in. So I have it wired in to where my leads are always hooked up on this one. Because my leads are all mounted back here, spooled up on the rack. You can run just about any type of rod on it. Anything DC, because it's a DC machine. So anything DC rod. So we're going to go ahead and uh, walk through some steps and show you guys how it works and what it does. So, come in here, turn it on, the gauge comes up, and then right up in here is my throttle control. So people have mentioned they see me threading this out. frequency welding machine which is why it whistles like that so everybody comments that there's got to be something wrong with something no there's not no there's not there are other types of welding processes than what you're familiar with so calm down this is why I run this on this truck because that right there is not a trail fix weld that is a weld so it's not a little cobbled together thing like I, I see a lot of the I see a lot of the uh, the, the buzz boxes, the rechargeable buzz boxes for the trail fixes, yeah, they work great for trail fixes to, to buzz something together and get it out. But this is full on welding. This is this is gonna burn together and hold together. So I run 7018, I carry on the truck 7018, 7014, 6011, 7010? Yeah, I have some 7010. I can run a grinder on the truck because I run AC DC grinders on there. Since it's a DC power machine, you have to have an AC DC grinder. The difference between a DC and an AC grinder is this can run slower. Oh, I see. AC DC, 120 volt AC DC. There it is. If it has the straight line and the wavy line, AC is and DC is the wavy line. Uh huh. So that's the only thing you got to watch out for is. The welder doesn't charge the battery while it's welded. So it only does it when it's, when it's shut off. So that's also another reason why I don't run an electric fan. I run a mechanical fan so that it cuts down on my power supply while I'm welding. Uh, I've got dual batteries and everything on here and I can run my lights forever. I don't think I'd have an issue, but it's just one of those things where I plan ahead for. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Hi. But yeah. So that's why I run this type of welder. I, I've, I've seen a lot of the comments, how it works, what it does, all that stuff. And I've seen everybody commenting on the whistle, um, this and that. Yeah, it does sound different than a normal machine, but it's because of the type of, of uh, yeah, the current. Anyway, <laughs> the Premier Power Welder is a certified um, certified for downhill pipe, certified for pipe welding, stuff like that. Um, structural, the, the thing's just awesome. It, it's really compact, I mean, for an alternator that you gotta have on a vehicle anyway. And for that little box right down there, that's, that's some of it behind the, the welder and why we use it. Cause like I said, 
that that's not just a that's not just a cobble together weld job, you know, or uh, trail fix. That's pretty good. Yeah, I could do better. But... <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. There you go. <laughs> Okay, let's touch base on the old wives' tale. Do you have to unhook a battery to weld on a vehicle? Yes and no. Electricity travels in a path. So if I hook onto this and I weld on this, that's fine. Now, when you hook onto this, will it weld to this? Absolutely. But then you generate heat anywhere that it touches because it's transferring through there by not the best contact. That's why when you're welding sometimes you'll get little black marks where it kind of arcs out or when you're welding like that and it kind of sticks to the table. So it's fine to do that, it's fine for fab work and stuff like that, but it's the same concept. So if you're welding on the axle, hook your ground clamp to the axle close to where you're welding and then it's not gonna go anywhere else. So if you, if you hook on this bumper over here and you're welding on the front, then you're transferring all that electricity through everything to get to that welding rod, to make that work. So if you localize where you're welding, then it's gonna be fine. So I've seen people that like clamp onto just the body and then start welding the exhaust. Yes, it's grounded, but it's using all the ground stuff that grounds your, your motor, um, your electronics, all that stuff. So then it's transferring through that and that's what causes the meltdown. I've seen people fry brake lines because... <laughs> that was me, <laughs> I, I did that. <laughs> I've done it too, I've done it too. Cause you're, you, you get in a hurry and you're not watching what's going on. And yes, it will weld, it will weld because it'll, it'll ground through that. But then that gets hot as it's being the ground going, ah, I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. This has been a welding lesson from Rory today. Thank you for sticking around. All right. So, U-Haul van full of fireworks. Hill. <laughs> I'm gonna do tow truck things. And we're gonna drag it up here and set some fireworks off for the 4th of July. Like always, she's <laughs> ugly, but she's tough. <laughs> what movie is that off of? So that, that is an eight inch shell right there. You have eight of those. Uh, right there is the shop. So that's where we'll be watching off. Watching the fireworks go off. They're having some trouble getting the U-Haul up here. To offload everything so they called us to help get it up the hill all right some more questions um, about my wheels and tires these are 37 inch BFG KM3s uh, they're mud terrain tire these are custom made um, bead locks on the front and these are Extremely custom made dually bead locks on the rear. I built these. So yeah, I am on, presently I am on my fourth set of these tires. I was asked to test these tires to see how they hold up. And I have beat on them 
for almost four years. I have never had a flat with these tires. And I have beat these tires. I bounced this rim off of a rock. And you can actually see where I dented that half inch plate. I broke three or four of the beadlock bolts off and bent that ring and did not damage the sidewall of this tire. These things are damn near bulletproof. I love them. That's why, that's why I run them. That's why I run them on everything I own so that I don't have a sidewall failure or any issues like that. Um, I had a matching set of these rims that were kind of homemade and I put them on the front and then I wanted the rears to match so I cut the beadlock rings off of the other rims and welded them onto the outer dually wheels which is super cool but they're a pain in the butt to mount. That's why nobody makes a dually beadlock wheel because it's a nightmare to get them on. <laughs> Okay, here we are. It's almost nine o'clock uh, in the evening. We had to run into the shop and grab the new wrecker and the recovery trailer. Going to pick up a rental side by side with a broken rim. So, super easy and straightforward. Uh, it still drives, so we're gonna pull it on the trailer, haul it down, drop it off. Uh, not crazy or difficult. Here we go. So here we are. The uneventful side of recovery. We're on the edge of a dirt road. And it's not rolled. There's nothing crazy. Tire's flat and the rim's broke because they hit a rock. Here we are. Put it on the trailer, haul it back to the shop. It's not always crazy cliffs and insane stuff. So I'll get it loaded up on here. To town we go. So the cool thing about this is this is kind of the first test with the, the new design of the trailer. And you see it's sitting right on that center skid plate, right on those bars we designed, right as the front tires dropped off. So that is working perfect. That's exactly like we were one. Four seater fits on there. Because most of the time it's the front suspension that's damaged. So sitting on there like that, that's perfect. That's exactly what we're going for. Yeah, this is cool. Sure. Hey, Sean. Yo. Hey, did you see the size of them cat tracks? <laughs> cat, you get it? Cat. <laughs> I think we need a marker and paper. I don't think I got enough crayons for most people, <laughs> but anyway. Like, look. <laughs> 